welcome to the video. This one's about one of London's best known and best loved music venues during the pub rock era of the 1970s. And that is the world famous Nashville. Stick around till the end and I'll tell you some things I guarantee you didn't know and a few surprises. Well, guarantee, mm, it's a, yeah, I don't know. Well, hopefully we can. So let's not mess around with this. Let's get started. First of all, it was built before 1805, that's for sure, because it was around in 1805, which is the year of the Battle of Trafalgar, I think, was it? Or was it Waterloo? Anyway, it was one of those. So it's called the Three Kings to try and get the Christmas trade all year round. And about 1902, it was rebuilt. All these years a bit hazy, because if you look online and look in the history books, there's all various dates. I mean, I've seen like 1902, 1903, and 1905. So let's say 1904. Let's be contrary. It basically had a lot of bars, because that was the thing with those Edwardian and Victorian pubs. So they had lots of bars. I think it was five when it was in its prime. And one of them was this great big music venue with a stage at one end. Now, this is what we remember. But way back when, I think it was 1964, it was owned by the West London family brewer called Fuller's. It later became Fuller, Smith & Turner. And they had an arm in the 1960s, a catering arm called Griffin Catering and that was who had the Nashville because it was like a dining room type the precursor to um, a gastro pub I suppose you'd say but back then it wasn't a gastro and they decided to open a country and western bar. Oh we got both kinds we got country and western and it became the Nashville hence the name Nashville being of course the centre of the country music world and it was opened by none other than Chet Atkins, I believe, who was a famous country star at the time. And another famous country star at the time was a guy called Tex Withers. We don't smoke marijuana, must go get now, Tex Withers was a very unusual man. He, he was four foot six, I believe. He had a disability, which was a hunchback. But he didn't let that stop him because he was like a very um, outward going, larger than life character, even at four foot six. Called himself Tex. I think his name was Alan. And he was born in East London, though he swore he was born in Texas. And when he wasn't in the Nashville rooms, because he was the compare, he'd be riding up and down the North End Road on a horse, dressed as a cowboy. And he actually, for publicity shots, pretended he lived on Wandsworth Common with his wife, who was a native American, as we say now. And I think she was actually Spanish, but don't quote me on that. Can I just pause here to say that if you like this, please like, comment, you know what to do. And if you haven't already subscribed, it would be a great help to me, a personal favor, if you could please subscribe. Thank you, and now back to the Nashville. This lasted for quite a long time, and then in 1974, they tried to put on cabaret artists, such as the, the new Vaudeville band. <laughs> Helen Shapiro, the Rockin' Berries, Heinz, people like that. So that was all very exciting, but it wasn't because it didn't last. But then I think it was May the 8th, 1975, it became a pub rock venue under the auspices of Albion Management, who booked a lot of the bands into various venues around that time, including the Hope and Anchor and the Red Cow at Hammersmith. The first night was with a band called Grimm's. So it was larger than most pub rock venues because it held 600 people, whereas places like the Hope and Anchor, I think, legally held about 80, but in fact, they got about 120, 150, perhaps, on a really good night, which was a blessing and a curse. If you've ever been there, where there would be like 80 people in or even 20 people in, it felt a bit empty, didn't it? It was like that we used to rattle around in there. It was a great venue. I mean, it had some fantastic bands and there were a lot of resonances in there, like Dr. Feelgood had a early residency. <laughs> Bear in mind it did go until 75, so they were almost on the way to being very famous. And also the Stranglers did a venture there and Elvis Costello. Shoot, shoot, shoot. 
He did a residency there, I think in 1979. It was the sort of place where you would want to go and watch bands. I mean, it went from pub rock to punk quite easily, like a lot of the venues did. Back then, I keep saying this, but it is true. There was no internet, so forget the internet. Everything was word of mouth, or it was what was on the radio, which was very, very, very limited by this time. It was mainly what was in the music press. By then, Time Out had started, so that was quite a major influence. But in 1980, for some reason, and I've never been able to get to the bottom of this, it seems to be a commercial thing. Fuller's decided not to have it as a pub rock venue anymore, and they just turned it into a, what became a sports bar. Because now, if you go there now, it's called the Famous Three Kings, which is a misnomer, I think, because the Three Kings was never that famous, as, as far as I can see. The Nashville was, and before that, the Nashville Root. I can remember going there, and this is like, you won't get this in any other video or blog about the time. But I remember in the mid 70s, there was a dog there with one leg and everybody used to pet this dog. And it had one leg because there was a burglary there. It may have dreamt all this. I think the dog was called Spot, but again, that may be, you know, and it lost its leg because there was a burglary and somebody broke in to try and steal the takings. Because don't forget, it was all cash back then. I mean, two people paid by check with, with I mean, did they have bankers cards? I, I can't even remember. So anyway, somebody broke in and shot the, the dog's leg off. Wouldn't have to presume accidentally. So this dog wandered around. Actually, you think about it, the dog got an award, didn't it? I mean, I, I can't find any of these online, so it's possibly something I just dreamt up. But I don't think so. I think this is all true, all this. So I'll tell you now, everything I've said is actually true. Well, my name's not John Bodicon. Thank you for watching. If you want, if you... If you liked it, please comment, let me know, like, etc., subscribe, and all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching, and um, goodbye. <laughs>